Hey, he just did it. The signal from Chris. I hadn't had that in a while, it seemed like. We're going to do some prayer requests, and then we'll finish up Amos. He never thought we'd finish. He thought I was going to get move on to something else. Yeah, you'll never finish that. But we are going to finish it tonight, and then we'll move on next week. All right. So, of course, the Fishman family, and, um, and this is just law enforcement in general. As a matter of fact, I was... I hadn't really thought of this, and I should have, but um, I was talking to um, Vin Falk this morning about the order and stuff, things going on. He, after we talked, in just a minute he texted and asked me to pray, us, me and us, to pray for, for him and the, the people at Funeral Home Bell. It's the same as all of us, you know, but they're, they've got some duties that have to take place you know, care for Matt and looking out and being sure that everything's like it's supposed to be. And so I, I told him that I would for sure. And so uh, in that prayer request is, is that whole situation. I think I think probably the county, we, you know, is, uh, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people all over the county are affected by what we've been going through. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, um, uh, Mr. Roy Rogers funeral the other day, we did not have an escort in Goldsboro like normal. And uh, Stephen Howe said, I guess he, anyway, how, anyway, he said, when we pull out, you need to pull out right behind me. But he said, not going to have a, an escort in town. Goldsboro doesn't have the manpower to do it anymore, to offer the escorts to funeral processions. So, I mean, I, they are under a lot of stress uh, in a normal situation. I mean, when you short, when you get a short a staff in uh, in any of those places at the hospital, which is I think going on still, and um, in police uh, police forces, it, it it just heightens that. People working extra hours, or there's not enough people on shift to do what really needs to be done. And so there's just a lot of areas that. Certainly, we need to pray about, pray for. And then the resurgence of the different viruses mm -hmm. and COVID and all that in our state. And our county is a red county. It is. We are uh, at work, got nothing to do with this except that somebody somewhere keeps up with how many cases there are reported in every county all over the nation. And then we get a report of that every week, and then our status goes up and down based on the county we're in. And we're back to uh, wearing masks in the office and a 50, supposed to be 50% um, staffing, but we're so understaffed that that doesn't affect us. But we are, Wayne County is a hot spot for it for some reason. So and an unspoken. All right, there we go. Jennifer got the text. Uh, well, what, what I mean by that is she got the, she understood the text, and I did. I'm thinking, how did she get her that bad driving in the parking lot in Walmart? And Jennifer said, 
I don't think she was driving. I think she got hit. And I had just, I mean, I had, I go, I went right to, you know, pulling in and somebody backed into me. And I'm thinking, my goodness, somebody must have been flying in the parking lot. That's, I did the same thing. And, and Jennifer's like, Lee had it I thing. think she was walking. <laughs> Well, Jennifer got it <laughs> immediately. And I did. And then when she said that, I was like, what? Maybe it's just the fact that thought she was actually driving. Because I thought she was driving, too. See, and you're thinking, I got it. Well, and when I went back and we read it, I was like, well, that's what it says. No, it, it, it said that. And I just thought that was funny because I didn't, I didn't realize all the other men didn't and the women did. But. <laughs> anyway, I'm thankful that she was. She could have. That could have really been. <coughs> could have been <coughs> really worth it. Fine, sorry. It's just obvious we don't go to Walmart very often. Oh my goodness! Seems like I go every day. I don't, but it seems like it sometimes. So. And I don't ever think about getting hit. I mean, I don't. I'm not one of these generally that walks down the middle of the highway. So. But anyway, still, you're out there with the park. I mean, you people aren't paying attention. But anyway, that's the blessing. What? Oh, oh, that's right. They're gonna be um, not world travelers. Well, they are, but not not right away. But they're gonna be gone a while. Well, they're gonna go come back, wash clothes, leave again. Right. Then go sign. Well, maybe that's one. All right. Yes, ma'am. Um, I have been asking for prayer over some uh, family circumstances. I didn't want to get into great detail. Um, but to add on to that, uh, there's going to be some major decisions being made in these circumstances here shortly. And just pray that the Lord put his hand on that discussion and those decisions. I'm sure that uh, Miss Ruby and her family can make use of prayers all the time. Sumner asked me to pray for her. She sent me a, a prayer request. I've just been trying to decide whether she didn't say anything about not putting it on the streets, I guess. Okay. Yeah, well, Tori didn't feel good, so she text, She had a home test, tested this afternoon, and tested positive for COVID. And um, she had tested negative yesterday. But anyway, so um, Judy had woke up and got up and didn't feel good, but she thought it was her back, you know, it hurts all the time, so she took some back medicine and then they came on to church and was fine, but this afternoon she got feeling bad again, so she's was taking it, getting ready to take a test. I don't know whether hers is negative or positive, I haven't finished that out, but speaking of the COVID going around, going around again. And she hugged me twice, I wonder if she did it on purpose, she knew she didn't feel good. I don't want to ask her. I asked Jimmy yesterday morning how he was doing and he said he was doing okay as far as he knew he was just sitting, you know, in the chair. I don't know if any of you have been to see him, not any, but he sits sometimes, you know, he'll cover himself. But, you know, <laughs> I guess if he doesn't want to deal with the situation or something, I don't know. You know, he's sitting there, he's got a blanket on a whole lot of the time when I'm there and he'll sometimes um, cover himself. 
but you know. Anyway, so he, I, I was wondering about how he was doing, lost his sister Faye. He said as far as he knew, he, he thought he was okay, as far as that goes, so still it's a loss. Ambassador, got, uh, not, not, a, not a horrible um, word from the doctor. It might have been a good thing, but still, he's sick. Anyway, I don't know what's going on. But yeah. First one, it all will be hard from now on, but the first one, I don't think that really hard. Okay. On her hand. Everybody? All right. Let's, let's pray. Father God, we're thankful for being able to be here this evening. Lord, you blessed us with a beautiful day today and some rain too. And we're just thankful for how you take care of our needs that way. Lord, we had a wonderful service this morning. Got a chance to be together and um, grieve some together and, and worship together. And it's been a real good day. And we just thank you for that. Lord, we we uh, we continue to pray for the Fishman family, for Sarah in particular, and the kids, Dave and Stacy, and we're just everybody connected with that situation. There's so many that haven't necessarily been named, but for instance, the funeral home um, staff that is attending to that and all that's surrounding that, they're brokenhearted and um, uh, concerned too for the county and for the families and all that's going on. And, Lord, the sheriff's department in as a whole is um, um, affected, of course. There'll be so many people this week that they're just continuing to try to do their jobs, but Lord, they're, they're ailing, Lord, and they're grieving, and we just pray that you would lift them up. I say, pray, Father, that there's this opportunity for them to maybe slow down and look at their own lives. The good news for Matt is that he was stepped right in his presence the other day. But I'm sure there's so many on that force and many other places that serve in these dangerous areas that don't know you the way he did. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would be exalted and that you would um, be lifted up in a way that many would hear the gospel, would hear the truth, and would come to know you as a result of this tragedy. And we do pray for our first responders. There's so many people that are on the front lines. Uh, from the ER staff, doctors there, nurses, and um, uh, workers on the uh, EMTs and others that are uh, out in the field uh, giving first aid. And well, there's just so many that um, really do put their lives on the line, li uh, literally, day to day. Um, caring for and loving on people and trying their best to help them. And Father, we sometimes take that for granted because our lives are safe generally and protected and looked after because of those people. I pray, Father, that we continue to remember them and uh, tell them when we get a chance how much they mean to us and to pray for them. Father, we just pray that um, for those unspoken requests that you would comfort hearts that we would know beyond a shadow of a doubt, Father, that you know everything that's going on. And it may be unspoken as far as um, in here, or for that matter, putting a uh, prayer request online or something like that, maybe not made public in that, rate, in that way. 
But Father, we know that you know. We know our hearts, and you know every one of these situations, and you know what's going on, and you have a plan and a purpose that we often can't understand, and we certainly can't see the end of, but we just thank you for that. And we ask you to work in those situations, to give us peace, those who have those requests, and those who have those ongoing needs. And Father, we just ask that you would work in all that you can. Lord, a happy occasion. Gina Wilbur going to ch get a chance to, to travel, go see his mom, go north, spend some time up there, and then they'll be coming home for a little bit and then going south to see their family. And we just thank you for that the opportunity that they have, the privilege that it is, and the blessing that it'll be to be together with family. I pray, Father, that you protect them as they travel, keep them healthy and the family members healthy so they'll be able to visit and they'll have uh, freedom to go and do like they want to, to go all the places and see all the people in both locations, to love on them and renew the relationship, to see them face to face and hug them. And Father, we just pray that you bring them back to us safely soon. We pray for uh, Amy, Father, and family circumstances. There's a lot going on there that you know about. And Father, I just pray that you are at work. I know you are. I believe you are. Uh, in the decisions that are to be made, Father, I pray that you give clarity and direction and unity when they come together for the discussions that they need to have as far as the decisions that need to be made in those situations, Lord, I pray that love would prevail and that you would be exalted based on what's decided and what's talked about. We pray for Miss Ruby Pate, Father. Uh, she's continuing to need uh, prayer. She needs you to walk with her and to speak into her situation. And Father, I pray for uh, Miss Pat, Miss Jenny, and, and uh, Mr. Pete and Mr. Bobby and the, the families that they rally around each other and, and try to do for Miss uh, Ruby and to love on her and to, to um, do all that needs to be done and make the right decisions for her. And we just pray for peace and comfort and direction. And Lord, we pray that your will be done on Baxter as uh, thank us for praying, Father, and giving us some word of not so bad news of, from his doctor's appointment. Father, there's still issues there and still treatment to be taken and he's still sick uh, uh, a very sick man and he's weak and we just pray for Baxter and Elaine that you bless them Lord you bless him with healing and health pray Father that you would be real to them and speak to a walk to be through these difficult days with them. We pray for uh, David and Claudia. Lord David is still trying to get used to the fact that his sister has passed away and then we went to the funeral and I was there and but Lord, uh, it was, it's still a difficult time. Hearts are broken there. And Lord, he's got COVID now. So Father, just pray for him. Pray for that situation. Pray for him physically. Pray for him emotionally as he uh, goes, uh, walks these next few days. We pray for Chris's mom, Miss Mary, that you would bless her, Lord, and comfort her heart as she's uh, coming up on a, a milestone on her daughter's birthday. And it'll be the first one that will have come and gone since she passed away. And just another reminder, not that she needs reminding, Lord, you know that, because that's constant, I'm sure, uh, in her life, but just another reminder of what she's lost and that her daughter's not with her anymore. And I just pray that you would begin even now to speak in that situation, that she'd feel your presence and lean on you and, and feel loved and remembered. And Lord, I pray that you'd help her walk that, that path, especially Wednesday, but this week. Lord, Mackenzie's hand surgery is coming. And I know there's concern about that. Father, I pray that there'll be a great victory here uh, done through this surgery and the, the surgeons that will be attending to Mackenzie. Lord, I pray that you just give them an extra measure of ability and grace to do what needs to be done. And I pray, Father, that Mackenzie would be able to understand what this is about as much as possible. And Lord, we pray that she would have more use of that hand when this is all said and done. Wallace has a colonoscopy Wednesday, and Father, we pray that the results of that will be good, but you know, Father, he's had cancer now for some time, and the reports from that have not been bad. He's not, it's not growing as far as we know, very, very quickly anyway, but Lord, there's always concern, especially when there's tests going on, and as far as I know, it's routine, and Lord, I pray that that's what it is, that it would just simply be to be sure that everything's still okay. Lord, I pray for Wallace and Lord as they prepare Lord, I pray that you would uh, see fit to uh, grant good results, a good easy test, an easy preparation. And Lord, we just pray that you would do everything 
that you came before him. Lord, I want to praise your name. I should have done that first, Father. I want to praise you for Brother Betty Jean's not being hurt any worse. Many of us, I found out, misunderstood the text in the, in the beginning, but she was hit by a car in the Walmart parking lot. Lord, it could have been so much worse. It could have been so much more serious. And she's still hurt and being banged up, uh, sprained wrist and just hurt up, I'm sure. But Lord, it, it could, she could have had broken bones and much more serious injuries, and we thank you for your protection over her. And Lord, we just praise you for how you watch over us, even when we don't even know something like that's coming. So Father, we just pray that you would continue to do your work. Lord, we just trust you. We know we're in your hands, and our lives are, are in your hands. And Lord, we just pray that you continue to walk with us. Help us to see you at work and feel your presence. And Lord, we pray as we speak. It's been a little while finishing up the book of Amos, Lord, tonight, that you would bless us in this, our discussion in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Amos, chapter 9. I'm going to read verses 11 through 15. And then we're going to finish it up. So, verse 11 through 15 in Amos, if you will, if you found it, you want to, stand with me as we read God's word. Um, thank you very much. On that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and repair its damages. I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who does this thing. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him who sows seed. The mountains shall drip with sweet wine and all the hills shall flow with it. I will bring back the captives of my people Israel. They shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink wine from them. They shall also make gardens and eat fruit from them. I will plant them in their land and no longer shall they be pulled up from the land I have given them, says the Lord your God. We're going to stop right there. What a great promise, but he starts off with a little bit difficult. You know, we're finally finishing, like I said. Amos seems like it's been a while. Been out and other things going on. But anyway, and this book, you know, has had some hard truths that we've sort of talked about. You know, with all that's going on in this book um, and in the world today, um, I wanted to ask you this question as we finish up here. Do you think it makes sense to be hopeful given what you see and hear every day. Hopefully you don't hear too much negative on your cell phone, but if you're paying any attention, boy, there's a lot of, there's plenty. So what do you think? Does it make sense to be hopeful today? That was under your breath. You want to say that? Yes. My hope is in the Lord, not in what's going on around me. Amen. Thank you for, I, want, I, knew the, I knew that was going to be the consensus. I just wanted you to say it out loud. Absolutely right. We can't see good. Jennifer and, and I've had a revelation. It's hard to live that now sometimes when what you can see, y'all know that. And as I give this as an example all the time, I promise you, uh, quit with my children so much. But when we see the choices they make day to day and we know what they've been taught and we see the difference in those two things, sometimes it becomes... It, it could easily be um, depressing. And as a matter of fact, it could even get to the place where without saying it, if we're not careful, we begin to believe, well, this will never change. Now, we'd never say that, hopefully. We might in a moment of frustration because we know what the truths are. I mean, we know what the Bible teaches. Miss, Miss Ruth, I don't know what goes on, but I know that you're there a lot. And I know that this has been going on. And so in a situation like that, when you don't see any light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, you don't, you don't see it getting better, it's very easy in situations like that to be down in the dumps and say this is, you know, and not to have hope. But I wanted to ask it that way because of what we just read. Because the first thing is right now, in the short term, it seems like there's a whole lot to fret over. And I mean, you know, just given last week's circumstances that have affected all of us, just that one, of course it's huge, but just that one huge event, we focus on the negative and all that surrounds that. It'd be very easy for us 
to spring over that. The Old Testament is full of references to the house of David, but the image in verse 11 is of a tent or a tabernacle that has fallen down. And I'm gonna just tell you, but a fallen tent is not worth a flip. When I was about 15 or so, probably told y'all this, I don't have any new stories, huh? Maybe I hadn't told this one in a while. A, a facet of the um, Boy Scouts is the Order of the Air. I don't know if y'all ever heard of that. But it's sort of a, an honor organization kind of within the Boy Scouts. It's like a, your troop has to pick you, your fellow Boy Scouts. Name one or two people that meet, meet a, a, a list of qualifications, if you will, standards, I don't know. Anyway, they pick you out. So that's why it makes it a little bit special. Anyway, as a result of that, then you have to go through your what they call your ordeal, which is a weekend, you know, of camping kind of and some things you go through. And anyway, so we go, to, I get picked, and we go to that. I set my tent up, and part of that is a night spent out in the woods with your pocket knife and a piece of string, and, you know, see if you can stand it. Anyway, it rained my night. Y'all know how I love to be out in the rain. That might have been part of the reason I don't. But anyhow. As I was, I was messing around my tent over there getting the stuff that I was supposed to have, we had a, you could take three or four items. I turned like that and take off running because they're saying, come on, come on, it's time right now. You know, they're rushing you around. Hurry up and wait like I suppose the military, I've heard that is. Anyway, so I take off running. Well, that night it rains. Instead of stringing my string up like I should have done and I take my poncho and put across it to make myself a little tent, it takes five minutes. It was dark when we got there and I thought, well, I can see stars. I thought, well, it's probably not going to rain. So I just wrap myself kind of up in that, my sleeping bag laid down. And sometime during the night, I did put my head up heel, which is small, especially if you're going to be there and it's raining. And it began to rain. And much like in a tent, when you're in the rain, you can hear it, you know, and it kind of wakes you up a little. Anyway, anyway, it kind of rained for a right good while during the night, probably, I don't know, an hour or two at least. Well, it quit, and eventually sun rises. They come back to get us, and I'm like, ooh, I made it. But when I got back to my tent, I didn't realize that as I turned to run, because they were calling, I had hit the front tent stake, and it did that. And the tent laid flat with the door up with the front door on it, screen on it. I don't know what y'all, if y'all know anything about a screen mesh on a tent, but it's not waterproof. As a matter of fact, it acts like a strainer. So when I got back, there was a big old puddle of water in my tent, and everything I had was right there at the door because I had been dragging through it, you know, trying to find the three items I was supposed to take with me. Nevertheless, it was all water. Anyhow, that reinforced the idea that a fallen tent's not worth a flip. That's what I'm saying. When he's describing a fallen tent here, there's nothing good about that. A fallen tent here uh, is a great picture, I think, of where we are today. I mean, there's a, there's a tent, but it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's not uh, holding up, if you will. It's in the bargain. I would say that we could probably describe the church of God as that in many places, in many ways. We're a tent. In other words, we've got a covering. At least it's been offered to us. But if we're not living in the, the in, in operating in the power of the Holy Spirit, then the tent's falling, and in that case, it's not doing any good. I mean, you know, we're in a difficult situation. You look around, there's sin everywhere, lost and evil. It's, it's everywhere we look. On the other hand, though, <laughs> if there is a reason for hope, and that's, again, why we started off with, oh, we, is there any reason for us to hope, then there's a powerful truth to be had in that. Because we've all experienced the power that hope brings. I have experienced that because y'all always become a running joke with anybody that knows me about camping. I really do enjoy camping in a tent unless it's raining. And I know that the tent keeps the water off of you, but if you've ever camped anywhere in the water, if it rains a whole lot, it runs underneath it. And you're thinking to yourself, well, they taught me when I was young to put a tarp underneath the tent. And I'll tell you what a tarp does when you're at the beach. It holds the water up under the tent. See, it's the sand, and that water will drain into that sand and go away in a minute when it rains at the, at the beach. But you put a tarp underneath it, 
and it'll just sit right there for 10 days, I found out. <clears throat> you think, as hot as it is, it ought to evaporate, but I don't know. Anyhow, I'm just saying, there's a powerful truth here. Uh, when you look at this fact, he, he's saying that the, the tent's fallen, but he doesn't leave it that way. And there's a lot of hope. When you, when I'm in that, if I can change my situation, what I'll do, I, most of the time when I get in that situation, and I'm in the rain like that, I try to look at Jennifer, because it's as if she just blossoms in that situation. Oh, well, it's not that bad. And that just, you know, that just like pouring salt on it to me. I'm like, I want you to come over here and be miserable with me. Don't be joyful. But that's not what she does. She sees the positive. And that's kind of what's going on in that. You know, there's some negative right now. Yes. And that, there's no way to deny that here. And we've all experienced that. But because we know there's hope, it changes everything. It changes our perspective. The current situation hasn't changed. I mean, it's still raining. My clothes were still wet when I got back, and I was mad about that for a little while. <laughs> but then you get your mind on something else, you begin to focus on the positive here. You, you know, see, there's a positive with Stacy Peachman in that she raised her children with the foundation Absolutely right. Absolutely right. As a matter of fact, and I, well, I don't know whether who's all going to go to the funeral or not, and it might, I'm not going to tell the story that Dave's going to tell, but I will tell you that part of what he's going to talk, if, if, if he can't, still plan it to. And one of the things he's told me about two times, he's trying to talk through it so he can get to where he can say it without crying, is about Matt's salvation, and then years later, him coming back when he was like, in teens or late teens. And that's a beautiful story, especially. And then there's another story about Monday morning. But you have, you're absolutely right. There's a whole lot of negative. And man, we could focus on the loss. And there's a huge loss. A loss for that family. But Matthew stepped right into the presence of Christ the other day. And, and we're left here, but he stepped right into glory. And so there's a positive there. There's absolutely is. There's always hope because there's a Savior. And you're, that's, that's the truth. Our current situation doesn't necessarily change. However, the hope that we have, and when we place our faith in that and we look at that trust, at that hope, our heart is changed. It's transformed. Our vision's directed away from the negative. If Jennifer, what she was trying to do, in those many times over and over and over when it was raining and water running right through the campsite and me thinking, I'm gonna have to load all this mess up wet, carry it home and put it all back out, let it dry, it'll be a nightmare. And it always was. But she was trying to focus me over here on something else and not leave, so focus on the negative. And that's exactly what we have to do. The, you know, from the, we can look at the wrecked campsite, but we have a savior and that's what we need to look at. We need to think about this promise of God here. Uh, where the hope is, we see the seed where the hope is. God's got a plan. We, um, I would tell you, it's difficult. It's difficult for a woman in the, in the situation that Sarah's in when she looks at you and says, I can't, I don't understand. I can't understand how God would let this, how this could be his plan and how this could be you know, and I, I wished I had an answer. I feel very inadequate in those times. I did tell her, though. I said, we have to trust what God said is true, is true, even when we can't see it. There are, the time, there are times that we just trust him. God says that he's going to work everything that happens for our good if we're his, if, we, if we're 
the call for you there, won't you? And that being said, we can't see the good right now. I mean, not for us anyway, not for that family. But the hope lies in knowing the hope giver, in knowing the Christ, in knowing that he's got a plan. And even when it's difficult, it's sort of like, you know, sometimes we do this trust game. Y'all know y'all does that when you fall backwards. And I don't like that game. I don't like it at all. I'm not, I'm evidently trusting you when I can't see you is not one of my strong suits. But I'll tell you one thing, we had, we used to have uh, our, the, um, for years now, since Jennifer's been with, you, with the students, we've had a um, Super Bowl party. And one of them, years ago, I don't know how many years ago, we had it at our house, which was a great occasion for me to clean the garage out. So anyway, we had it out in the garage. David Rutledge was there, and he's always been a strong young man. And so when you go in our garage, you know, we've got brick steps to go up there, and it's about, Steps are probably, to me, almost waist high. So standing up on this right here, and he just says, all right, now turn around and fall back in the arms. Now he's standing on the floor. So you fall almost parallel to the ground before he catches you. He catches you, and he's strong enough to then, I'm sure still, to just throw me around like a stick, and Jennifer too. But I'm going to tell you, there's nothing, it, it's very hard to do. But that's exactly what God calls us to do. We just trust in, in his plan, trust in him. He says right here, you know, it's bad. There's a the tabernacle of David that's falling down. But then he says, the days are coming when the plowman will overtake the reaper. The treader of grapes, him who sows seed, the mountains will drip with sweet wine, all the hills shall flow with it. I will bring back the captives of my people Israel. He's promising a restoration here. A redemption, if you will. He's promising. Now, obviously, this in the text and in the moment was, or in the, at the time, was I'm going to bring them back home to the, to the promised land, to the land. But I say we could, we could say that same promise. We, have, we got that same promise. God is, will restore us in that same way. I will plant them in their land. No longer shall they be pulled up from the land I have given them, says the Lord God. He Wanted, to know, wanted us to know right at the end of Amos that it was him making the promise. And he's the one that can keep it if there's a promise to be made. So if our heart will focus on that and not look at the wrecked campsite and not look at the loss and all that as much as we could. So where is the hope? It's in God and his plan and his purpose and his word. One of the reasons that we all, that's one of the reasons I think, I, I never could understand why when I was young I had to learn what omnipotent man and what omnipresent man and all those big words you know, seem like a huge word when you're 12 or 14 years old but it is to our benefit to learn what all powerful means because he is all powerful God can do anything when we can't see how our children are going to come back we, we rest in the promise that God has He's the only one that can do it anyway. I mean, if I would have could have done it, I'd have done it already. But God can. He's not limited by our small imagination or by our, uh, well, I just don't see how it's going to take place. I just don't see it. Just because we can't perceive it doesn't mean that God can't accomplish it. You see, it can happen. God can. He promises here their restoration. And in the moment that he gave that, they were in a bind. They were in a bad place. They were captives and away from the land. They were in bad, a bad situation. And God is promising all this good stuff. How can that be? Well, he's making a promise toward a great ending. He's made a promise toward a great ending. You see, when we're on this side, it seems like that death is the worst thing that the world can experience. And it is if you don't know Christ. But I'm just saying that that is, and it is, a bad situation, but it's bad for us because we're left here. We're the ones that have to learn how to live without that person. And we're the ones that have a broken heart, but that's a, a step into the presence of the Lord. That's the, the end result of the promise God has made us. So 
this text and many other places, they point us toward this great ending that he has promised us. God wins. And we're on the team. <clears throat> you see, I didn't play high school football much. I say I did because I was on the team and I was the practice dummy. I got hit a bunch and, and was and helped the offense learn how to play against the defense they were playing that Friday night. And so I wasn't all that much involved in actually winning the game. But there was no they won and I happened to be on the team. It was we win. And God is going to give the victory, yet we're on the team and so we win. We win just like that. We're on the winning team. Israel will be restored. We know it has been. We've just come back. We can see how they're growing. And we, Elliot talked to us about how Ben Gary, David Ben Gary, the first president, governor, oh, anyway, the first leader, prime minister, told them to plant trees. We're putting the roots down. And they, you know, there are trees now everywhere, but apparently back then we're not. And they're growing, they're exporting food. There's a restoration. There was a restoration then. And there is one still going on. Israel's returning to their promised land. As a matter of fact, people are coming back right now. Now, I'm not necessarily referring, he's not, to the nation that exists today necessarily. But it is a great reminder of God's faithfulness. He said that would happen, and we can look right there, and he said there will be fruitfulness. And Israel's fruitful. One of only six nations in the world that export food. I didn't realize there was only six nations that export food. And it's one of the smallest. But there, there is an abundance being produced. And if you go over there, you'd wonder where they get the water from. I still am a marvel. It's a marvel uh, to think about how they get all that water. But they're building another plant right now to provide more. The whole world will be part of this vision. People all over the world will be, will be part of it. This passage refers to Jews, of course, but there's plenty of evidence that he's, he is restoring Gentiles. We'll be blessed, too. We're believers. We're his. We're grafted in. So we're not here by accident. We're not floating around. We may have a fallen tent right now, but we're not waiting on an uncertain end. God's promise is clear. We might see, all we can see right now is the collapsed tent and the water running through the campsite. But that's not the end. God says, I'm going to restore. God says he will. God promises that if you'll raise, um, train up a child in the way he should go, when he'll over and not depart from it. God says that his word won't return void when it goes forth. So when you, when you live like God calls you to live with everything that you can, even though you're not perfect. You're the beneficiary of those promises. We are. God has said he'd restore it. He restored it. God has said that he'll, these th he made us these promises about his word and about our, our children, about our lives, and he's keeping those promises. So yes, there's reason for hope. We have the most reason for hope of anybody in the world. There's nobody else with any reason to hope. They may think they do. Hope in their bank account or their job or whatever it is they have. But all that stuff's going to be left here. All going to be burned up. But we have a promise of eternity with Christ. Eternity in heaven. And a place that he's prepared for us. And so there is hope. No denying there's evil. No denying there's, there's bad going on. Difficulty that we face. But that's not the end. And that gives us hope. And I'm telling you, I believe if we've got hope, we can make it through most anything. So, done with Amos. And done early even. What do you think about that? Maybe a few minutes back. I plan for y'all to say a little more on Amos. Go ahead. Sorry.
Mm -hmm. and They've had their needs met and been loved on for sure. I haven't pre I haven't pre-staged you. I should have probably asked you about this, but I've heard a story about somebody you talked to Monday morning that said they would do one of the projects. Is that true? Yes. Matthew called, or he called. You called him. Or he called in. Go ahead and you tell it. You tell about it. You did it. You <laughs> and uh, because they were talking about how old they were, and they then they asked me how old I was, and I was sixty-seven. So uh, they were just joking about that again. But but when Matt showed up, we got a lot of work done, you know. So of course they got a lot of work done anyway. But Matt was just a blessing to many folks. He was. I had heard that, and I believed it. It wasn't as if I didn't believe the story. I just wanted you to have the opportunity. To that he was thinking about. What I was thinking about that was the other side of that coin was that he was leading his family yes. to serve the Lord together. Yes. So both those things, he was thinking about others, but he was also giving an example for and his I children. Know. Many sweet memories and stories that we've heard. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll put you on the spot a little bit. I appreciate you doing that. All right, let's pray together. Thank you all for being here tonight. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. I need to call in. Lena and Candy. Uh, Lena. Well, it has. You know why? I, I was thinking about the family. You know, I mean, they lost a loved one, but they got snatched into this, like we talked, said this morning. You know, they, they're, I mean, innocent in the matter. I mean, you know, yet, oh, it was your brother that did it. You know, and they'll always, or for some people, you know, it'll always be that way. And they didn't really have anything to do with it. And, and you're right, the person who called probably feels responsible. But what, what, that's what you're supposed to do. Somebody needs to come get him before he hurts himself or somebody else. You know, obviously, and that was obviously a good call to make, I suppose, at that time. I mean, I don't, what do you do in that situation?
put it back. Anyway, there's hurt and heartbreak and heartache all, all the way surrounding that situation. And I don't want to, um, Sarah herself even Monday said that she didn't. This was before he took his own life. That she was, you know, of course, the gun ho and want to protect, mad, hurt, was all there. And she said, I don't want to do this. I don't, I don't, you know, I, I'm not, that's not what I'm thinking about. Even in the midst of all that, there was no, none of that going on. And I mean, I know, you know, we're human. And so those emotions come off fleeting sometimes, but still, I'm just saying, there's just plenty of need for prayer and love and support surrounding on the, all sides of that sure. this issue. All right, let's pray together. We'll remember Miss Lena and Candy. Father God, we're thankful that we've been able to be here. What a great promise. When we begin to read in that passage and, and read the symbolism, if you will, the, the fallen tent, the, the, the fallen kingdom, the downfall, if you will, of mankind because of our sin and our bad choices. Yet God is faithful, and he has promised us to restore and to continue to love. And, Father, we're so thankful for that. What a blessing it is to be able to be in your hand, Lord, and to know you and to follow you. Even when we can't see what's coming, we know that we can trust you. And we do pray for um, Miss Lena Lee. Lord, she's not necessarily healthy herself, and she's worried and concerned and trying her best to do for Candy. And Lord, we just pray for Candace, that you just bless her and continue to watch over her as she's walking this difficult path of cancer and the treatment that she's had to have. Lord, we just pray for healing in both situations there. We pray, Father, for um, the family of this young man who took, his, took Matt's life and then took his own life the other day. Lord, they're, they're hurting, and I pray, Father, that, that we would love them and that we would pray for them, and if there is opportunity, reach out to them and uh, offer them your forgiveness. Talk to them about your forgiveness and who you are. And, Lord, I just pray that you would be exalted somehow in everything that's said and done. I pray, Father, that you'll be head up, held up and that many will hear the gospel this week and lives will be changed as a result of what we're going to go through in the next few days. We just thank you for that opportunity, Lord. We pray that you'd find us faithful in Jesus' name. Amen.